Welcome to Pressure Cooking 101. Let's start off with the basics. What is a pressure cooker? It's a pot with a heavy locking lid that traps the steam created inside, which causes pressure to build inside the pot. With more pressure, there's more energy, so the temperature increases, meaning we can cook foods faster. In fact, with a pressure cooker, you can cook foods in one third of the time it would take on the stovetop or in the oven. Let's take a look at the parts of a pressure cooker. First, we'll start with the lid. The lid, as I mentioned, locks onto the base. And inside, you'll see a gasket all the way around. This gasket has to be in the right position in order to help create that seal needed to trap the steam. You're also gonna see some valves in here, a safety valve and a pressure regulating valve. That pressure regulating valve is controlled on top of the unit with a little switch that turns to either ventilate or open or pressure or closed or sealing. All of these pieces here work together to make that lid trap the steam locking on perfectly. When it's locked on, there's no way you can open that if there's any pressure inside, making it perfectly safe. Now inside the unit, we have a removable insert. Some of these inserts might be nonstick. This one happens to be stainless steel. The important thing about the insert is that inside there's always a max fill mark, which you need to pay attention to. And of course on the front, you're gonna find the control panel. Now depending on the brand you have, this control panel will differ, but it always has a start and a stop button and often a lot of different preset buttons to help get you started. On the back of the unit, you're going to see a condensation catch. This simply pushes onto the unit here to catch any condensation that comes out of the cooker or from the lid when you open it. Many pressure cookers have a lid that can actually stand on the side of the unit on either side, regardless of whether you're left-handed or right-handed. That's very convenient. A pressure cooker is a great appliance to have in your kitchen for a number of reasons. First of all, it's super fast. That means that it's energy efficient and saves you time because it cooks in a third of the time it would normally take. It's also super compact, so it sits on your countertop. It doesn't spread heat into your kitchen. Perfect for the summer months. It's safe and easy to use because these new digital pressure cookers have so many safety valves built into them. It's also a really healthy way of cooking because you don't need to use as much fat. It relies on liquid instead. This allows you a lot of unattended time. So once the food is in the cooker cooking, you don't open it. You go about your business, this is doing the rest of the work for you, but the most important thing that it does for you is infuse that flavor into the food. The food that comes out of a pressure cooker is super flavorful, intensely flavored. It's that pressure that pushes that flavor into the food. So what can you cook in a pressure cooker? Well, there are a lot of things. Braised foods, steamed foods, cakes that you want to be really, really super moist, puddings that you would normally cook in a water bath, all of these foods can be done in a pressure cooker very easily. You can even cook some frozen foods in a pressure cooker. My rule of thumb is one inch. If the food is thinner than one inch thick, you can put it in frozen. That means chicken breasts, sausage links, pork chops, they can go into a pressure cooker frozen. It will take a little bit longer to build that pressure, but you can do it. One question that comes up a lot is what size pressure cooker should I get? Well, if you cook for a family of two to four, a four quart pressure cooker is probably big enough. If you have a six quart pressure cooker, you can feed a family of four to six. If you have an eight quart or larger pressure cooker, you can definitely feed a crowd or make large batches of food. Remember, it's a lot easier to cook a little in a large pot than it is to cook a lot in a little pot. So if you think you might ever cook a large batch of food, go for a larger pressure cooker. So let's start cooking. One of the food items that really comes out terrifically out of a pressure cooker are pieces of meat that are usually tough, have lots of flavor, but take time and temperature in order to make them tender. One of those items is pressure cooker ribs, and that's what I'm gonna do for you today, but all of this applies to things like pot roast, stews, barbecued pulled pork. They all cook in roughly the same way. The one thing they all need is at least a cup of liquid. Now keeping in mind that the pressure cooker really infuses flavor into your foods, let's put a flavorful liquid in there, like beef stock. Remember, infusing flavor. So we're gonna add more flavor to the pot in the form of some onions as well. In a pot roast, you would also add carrots, celery, 
But here we're just trying to infuse that flavor into our barbecue ribs and really get it nice and tender. I'm gonna put a rack on the bottom of this pan. That's gonna make it easier to take the ribs out. Some cookers come with racks like this, or you can make a rack yourself with aluminum foil or even with some vegetables. Here are our ribs. I've rubbed them with a spice rub. Again, because pressure cookers infuse flavor into foods. So more flavor on the food, the pressure builds, forces that flavor into the food, more delicious dinner. Our ribs will go right on that rack and they can even stack on top of each other. You can put as many rib racks as you can fit in here as long as the liquid doesn't go over that max fill mark on the inside of the insert. Once everything's inside, pop that lid on, lock it into place, and make sure the pressure release valve is set to the ceiling or off or closed position. We're gonna first start by setting the pressure. Some pressure cookers make you choose between low, high, and medium pressure. If your pressure cooker only has one setting, know that it's a high setting. We're going with high pressure and we want about 45 minutes. Now it's gonna take some time for this pressure cooker to build up pressure. Once that pressure has been reached, the time will start counting down. When the time runs out, we'll release the pressure and I'll explain that to you in just a second. Another way to set your cooker would be to use the preset button that might appear on your brand. Now, if you do have preset buttons, refer back to the manual to find out exactly what that means and what it refers to. I prefer to set the time and temperature manually because that gives me full control and I can always reference a recipe or a cooking chart to get that right time. So once that timer goes off, we're going to release the pressure. Now, there are two different ways you can release pressure. The method that we're gonna use for ribs, and you're also gonna use the same method for pot roast, for stews, for any meats, is called a natural pressure release, and it's just this easy. We're gonna simply turn that cooker off and let the pressure drop naturally. So after about 10 or 15 minutes, the pressure will have naturally fallen in the cooker. You'll know because the pressure pin will have fallen in the hole here and you'll be able to open the lid. Rest assured, if there's any pressure in the pot, you won't be able to open that lid, it will be locked. So remove the lid carefully, letting the steam go away from you, and then take a look at what you have inside. Here we have our ribs, but they don't have the sauce on them yet that we want, so remove them, let them rest, and then we'll make the sauce. So for this case, I'm gonna make a barbecue sauce by putting ketchup, molasses, brown sugar, a little bit of soy sauce into the pot once I remove that rack. That's going to add to the stock and the onions that are down below and create a sauce. So by pressing saute and letting that boil, we'll create a sauce that we can then use to coat all of our foods. In the meantime, remember foods out of a pressure cooker are really hot, so these ribs need time to relax and rest and cool a little bit anyway. Once your sauce has thickened with a little time and the meat's had a little time to rest as well, then you can put the two back together and get ready to call people to the table. The meat will be super tender, the flavor of the sauce will be perfectly infused with the flavor of the ribs, making the perfect marriage of two food ingredients. And look how tender this is after a little time in the pressure cooker, ribs just falling apart so beautifully. That is just 45 minutes. That's the power of pressure. Another really popular dish to make out of your pressure cooker is a rice or pasta one pot meal. The great thing about a pressure cooker is you can cook the meat, the rice, or the pasta all at the same time in one pot. Once you've done your mise en place, the rest is super easy. Simply press that saute or brown button, add a little bit of oil, and you can start browning right in the very same pot. This dish that I'm making is an Italian sausage, pepper, artichoke, sun-dried tomato, rigatoni, all made in one pot. No need to boil a separate stock pot of water to cook the pasta. Browning meats first gives it more flavor, adds a little color to the meat, and it also gives you a chance to drain off any excess fat that you don't necessarily want left in the meal. But after this, you can go ahead and add any kind of vegetable you like. I'm gonna add some peppers here, some artichoke hearts. Like-minded vegetables are good. For instance, 
You want vegetables that can handle the heat that's going to be required to cook the sausage and the pasta together. You wouldn't want to add something soft like broccoli because it would become mushy. But any vegetable like mushrooms, peppers, onions that you wanted to add, now's the time to put them in. Continue to saute for just a little while and then we're going to add that very important ingredient which is liquid. Now liquid can come in many different forms. You can add wine, you could add beer, you could add salt, you could even add water or heavy cream. But remember, it has to be liquid. Crushed tomatoes don't really count as liquid because they're too thick. Make sure there's something really, really liquidy like water. So it's always a great idea to add your dried herbs to the pot before you add liquid. That gives them a little chance to get their flavors out in the fat that remains in the pot before you add the liquid and prevent that from happening. If you do choose to add wine, I like to make sure you add it first of all the liquids and then let it boil for just a minute or two to boil off any alcohol in there. Scraping the bottom of the pot after you add the wine is called deglazing and that's going to bring up some of the flavor that's trapped on the bottom of the pot. Once that's boiled for just a minute or two, go ahead and add your liquids. This time, some crushed tomatoes, and of course, because crushed tomatoes don't really count as liquid, some chicken stock. Now is the time when you would go ahead and add your pasta or your rice to the pot, if you're making this one pot meal. Once that pasta is in there, stir it around and make sure it gets submerged in that liquid. If you have a pasta recipe at home that you want to use in your pressure cooker, check out my page on converting recipes. There's some information there on how you can actually cook pasta in here without cooking it separately. You'll need about three quarters of a cup to a cup of water or liquid for every four ounces or quarter pound of pasta. And then just make sure it's submerged and cook it for about half the time it says on the package. This rigatoni has a package direction time of 14 minutes. So we're going to set it onto high pressure for seven minutes and let that go. It's gonna take some time to build pressure. Once it builds pressure, the time will count down. And then once the time is up, we'll talk about how to release that pressure. Now for our pasta, unlike with the pressure cooker ribs, we're gonna do the quick release method. Now to do that, you move the pressure limiting valve to the open or venting position. First, I'm gonna turn it off. And then I'm gonna get a towel in place because steam will come out of here perhaps a little liquid as well, and I'd like to protect my face, my hair, my counters, my cabinets, perhaps from any steam that releases. So simply drape that towel over the top, move that pressure limiting valve to that venting position, and then let that steam escape. Now this is the best method to use if you're going to be releasing the steam from anything that might otherwise overcook. So pasta, rice, vegetables, shrimp, crab legs, things like that. Anything that's not the large pieces of tough meat like the pressure cooker ribs. Now when you first look in your pot, you're gonna make sure that the sauce is the right consistency for you. Remember though that pasta and rice continue to absorb liquid as you leave them in the pot there. So letting it rest will actually thicken it up. The other thing is food out of a pressure cooker is super hot. So letting it rest for just a couple minutes will make everybody much happier. I'm using a wooden spoon to stir here so I don't break up any of those noodles, but when I'm ready to serve, I'm going to transfer to this big spoon and serve out a great portion of this pasta. I didn't have to boil water. I didn't have to cook the pasta separately. I didn't have to drain the pasta. It all cooked in one pot. And of course, remember with pressure cookers, you infuse flavor with that pressure. So we're getting pasta that tastes like the sausage and the peppers and the artichokes that we put in here. The same thing will happen with rice that you cook in this pot or any other kind of grain. A little parm, a little parsley. So that's dinner made in seven minutes. That's pretty fantastic and that's all out of one pot. Now of course if you're not all eating at the same time, the pressure cooker also has a warming feature that you can use. Leave the food in here, keep it on the warm setting, and let people come home at different times for their dinners. When it comes time to clean your pressure cooker, it's really very easy. 
The removable insert can go straight into the dishwasher as long as your manual for your brand says it can, but that goes into the dishwasher or cleans very easily in the sink. The lid is best cleaned in the sink because you don't want too much water getting into all of the other pieces here. The gasket's the hardest part to clean. Remove the gasket completely from the lid. This gasket, because it's silicone, can take on some odors. So I wish there was an answer for you to get rid of the odors completely. Use a vinegar solution to wash it. But what I like to do is get extra gaskets that you use specifically for baked goods or for delicate items, and then one you keep for your meats. Now when you put your gasket back into the lid, make sure that it goes behind that bar that holds it in place. This is a critical part of it being able to make the seal with the removable insert and build that pressure. Once that gasket is in properly, store that lid upside down on the cooker so that you're not trapping any moisture or any air in there. This is also going to help with that odor elimination. Now let's talk about the other accessories that you can use in your pressure cooker. Anything that goes into an oven can also go into your pressure cooker. So, cake pans that are made of metal are no problem in your pressure cooker. Also, oven safe ceramic dishes like ramekins. You could make little puddings in here or little breads in there. You could even use silicone items in your pressure cooker and of course large bakers like this. If your pressure cooker came with a rack, it makes it very easy to put that down into the pressure cooker. But if you don't have a rack, not all is lost. You can make yourself what I call an aluminum foil sling. Take a long piece of aluminum foil, fold that in half, fold it in half again, and that's just to fortify that strength of that foil, and then use this as a sling. Put your baking dish in the center, and you can use this to move it into and out of the pressure cooker. Now sometimes you use a rack in a pressure cooker to elevate the food off the bottom of the cooker. If again, you don't have a rack, you can make one with a piece of aluminum foil. Crumple the aluminum foil up into a long tube, and then you can either roll it in a ring or make little X's and put that in the bottom of your cooker and then your cake pan can sit right on the top. So anything that goes into an oven, including aluminum foil, can also go into your pressure cooker. That opens up a whole world of accessories, allowing you to make that many more things. Here's a tip for you. If you see steam escaping from the pressure cooker before it has come to full pressure, you can push down the lid and that helps form that seal, preventing any excess moisture evaporation. Just like that, you'll see the pressure limiting valve pop up. You'll know that pressure has been reached inside. No more steam is escaping. Once full pressure has been reached, then it will start counting down the time. Account for the time it takes to build up pressure and the time it takes to reduce pressure. The one rule with pressure cookers is that you can't thicken the sauce while it's cooking. You have to thicken it afterwards. That's because you need liquid in the cooker to create steam to help build that pressure. So we always thicken our sauces afterwards. To do that, you can do a couple of things. I'm going to add some thick tomato product here to thicken here. You could also, if you had a brothy liquid, thicken it with potato flakes or with something called a beurre manier, which is simply soft butter and flour mixed together, or something called a slurry, which is water and cornstarch. By adding those ingredients and putting it on the saute setting, you can bring that to a boil and the sauce will thicken. Let's do a little troubleshooting. These are things that might happen to you. First of all, what do you do if the time never starts counting down because pressure doesn't seem to have built? You'll see steam coming from here, but you won't see that pressure pin raise up. First thing to do is to turn off the cooker. Then open it up and check the gasket. That gasket has to be inserted properly in order for it to make that seal. Remove it, put it back in in the right place, and try again. The other thing you can do, of course, is push down on the lid when you see steam escaping from that pressure release valve. Doing that sometimes is just enough to help that gasket make that tight seal. What do you do if you see the words burn on the bottom here and if the cooker turns off automatically? That means that there's not enough liquid in the cooker. So again, turn it off, open up that lid, and then see if the food, of course, is not burnt, add more liquid, and start again. 
Another way to help prevent getting that burn notification here is to layer your foods. Make sure your liquid goes in at the bottom and then your solid ingredients on top of that. Another thing that might happen is you find some liquid spurting out of the pressure release valve when you go to release pressure with a quick release method. The best thing to do then is simply to cover that with a towel. Or remember, make sure you're not overfilling the cooker. Too much liquid in the cooker can cause it to splatter out of the pressure releasing valve. Another unfortunate thing that might happen to you, because it has happened to the best of us, is that you accidentally pour liquid into the cooker without the insert pot being in here. The best course of action if this happens to you is to dump that liquid out as quickly as you can and then hope for the best. If you're lucky, it will dry out and you'll be fine. That's my lesson on pressure cooking 101. If you'd like more information, please read the article below this video or check out one of the other lessons in the pressure cooker section of the cooking school. You'll also find lots of pressure cooking recipes by filtering by pressure cooker in the recipe section or go to the shop and you can find lots of my cookbooks there which have pressure cooker recipes. If you have any questions or comments on this video, please leave them in the comment section below and we'll see you for another lesson soon.